Okay, so I am Corey Abraham, and I'm going to talk to you guys today about how to hit Success Club without fail every single month. Um, I have been a coach for three and a half years, and I have um, been, gosh, I'm an SC10 legend, all-star legend, which means I've hit it at least 24 months, but I am at 40 months, I believe, of Success Club 10 um, consecutive months. So um, it doesn't necessarily get easier, but you do the work early, and you don't, you're not, you guys have experienced it, a lot of you, at the end when you're scrambling, like if you were in the Funky Feet Club with us, um, which was awesome. Um, a lot of you know what it's like when you're hustling, right? Well, let's change our mindset first of all and hustle at the beginning of the month. So I always set a deadline for myself the 5th, um, SC5 by the 5th, SC10 by the 10th, um, and that's my hard and fast deadline. So if I'm going to hustle, I'm going to hustle early in the month. And then the rest of the month, I mean, I, I just don't have to worry about it as much. And all the invites I'm sending later on in the month will pay off in the next month. So as you guys know, it starts conversations when you invite or when you're posting challenge group invites or transformations or whatever. That starts um, the process. Most people are not ready to jump in right then. It takes time, it takes conversations, it takes several follow-ups. They might watch you for six months after that initial invite. Um, very rarely do people jump at the, you know, the very first time you invite them. So the work you do now, I haven't figured this out yet, the work you do now will pay off in you know, um, June and July and the end of May, but probably not right away necessarily. And so you need to make sure that you're, you keep that momentum going even if people aren't, you're not getting yeses right away. Those invites will lead to yeses down the road. So that's the way this business works. So make sure that you just keep the momentum going and don't just, you know, invite a whole bunch at the end and then get disappointed if you don't have success club and then you, know, you do the same thing after the next month and you're not going to hit it again. So do that early and then you, <coughs> excuse me, you're not going to be so worried about it at the end. But I also, every single month, try to have at least some of my success club points come from new coaches. So um, we have a sneak peek coming up on the 5th, and we have one three weeks after that, which is like, I think it's the 20th, 26th, right? 26th. Um, so that's a perfect opportunity. If you have not been inviting, you need to invite. And a lot of you have not been inviting because we don't have that many people um, going to the event or even invited to the event. So make sure that you have invited like crazy anybody who um, you've ever spoken to about the opportunity, any of your great challengers, really any of your challengers, period. I mean, most coaches will just do a blanket invite to every single challenger they have. At the end of the group, I always post a video that tells them, you know, they can do a discount coach or make an income or pay for their shakeology or whatever. So I would suggest doing that, certainly with your current challengers, but also any stay-at-home mom friends you have, anybody who you know is struggling financially and would like some extra money, anybody who doesn't have work-life balance. So that was me, right? I did not have the work-life balance. So that was the draw for me. And that's who, that's my market. That's who I attract, people who also want the work-life balance, who have been in corporate America, in the law firm world or whatever, and want more balance in their lives. So that's, that's kind of my niche. But you need to figure out you know, who who you're speaking to. Now remember, you don't want everybody on your team. I know when you're starting out, you kind of feel like that, but you need to be a little bit, um, and you, you can have use some discretion. You don't necessarily want every single person. You can be selective. You only want the people who, like I, I don't even remember who coined the, the phrase, but you want the people who, who want you, or you need the people who need you. So make sure that you're looking for people who are a good fit. And so most of my posts are targeted um, to those people. So the busy moms, the people who are working jobs, they don't necessarily want to be working in corporate America, a lot of hours, we just want to be home with our kids. So you need to make your post specifically towards those people, target those that particular population, and then you'll have better results. So you don't just want to cast a wide net and get everybody and you know hope that there's something good in there. You want to be specific and find your, your light first, as Shalene would say, your specific target audience. So if you haven't thought about that, do that. Um, but you want to invite as many as you can, many, as many people in your friends. Even if you've invited them before, invite them again. So what? You know, they don't have to accept. It's not like you're spamming them. You're just sending them an invite. They can decide whether to accept or not. But after I send an invite to someone, I'll send them a short message. 
and just say, hey, so and so, I hope all is well. I just sent you an invite to our coach open house this Thursday night. Um, it's, I think you'd be an awesome coach because, you know, and that's where you tell them why they'd be an awesome coach because you're so great with people. Or I know, I think this might be a good fit for you because I know you've been wanting to spend more time at home. Or I think this would be a good fit for you because I know you guys have been struggling financially and this could bring some extra income. So it's something to think about. No pressure, but I'd love for you to jump on the, on the call or on, at the, come to the event on Thursday and find out more information. Can, um, that's basically you're just explaining what you just did, that you just sent an invite. If you were talking to somebody before you sent an invite, then you're just you're saying basically, like, hey, would you like an invite? If they're like, I'd like more information about that. Okay, well, would you like an invite to this event on Thursday night? We're going to talk all about it, whatever it is. But so I always send a short message um, after I send the invite, just telling them what it is. You know, I don't just send like send 100 invites and then hope somebody says yes without even knowing kind of what it is. So I mean, it's kind of explanatory, but not necessarily if you're not around the Beachbody world, right? So send a short message. So I always get, you know, at least a few of my points from new coaches. And I'm posting about the coaching opportunity quite a bit, which you also need to do. At least once a week in your social media posting stuff, you need to talk about, you need to talk about lifestyle. So what you love about coaching, what you love about community, what you love about um, running challenge groups, what you love about, you know, whatever it provides you. Um, the accountability, um, you know, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be, Hundred thousand dollars, or two hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand dollars, or whatever. It doesn't even have to be hundred dollars. It just means whatever it is. Just talk about what you love about it um, and share that. And generally, um, I find what works best is when you talk about how you felt before that. Um, so, like for me, like I said, it's work-life balance. So I'll talk a lot about how much I love being able to spend time with my kids and be present with my kids. And I am working, yes, but I'm working maybe fifteen hours a week now. And, um, and that's such a drastic change from the, excuse me, the 100 plus hour work, work weeks that I had previously. So you just want to talk about those types of things and how you want to relate to how somebody might feel. So if you have lost all this weight, you'll talk about how it felt when you were so overweight. Uh, you hid behind your kids, you know, whatever it is for you. Just figure that out and then talk about how you felt. Always come back to how you felt because that's what people relate to, right? They don't relate to just your random facts. They relate to how you feel or how you felt before. So that's what you want to connect to always, how you felt. Um, but, so back to Success Club. So guys, this is the thing. Success Club is your job. I know I've said that before on our main page. You guys mute your lines. But it is your ever-loving job to hit Success Club. It's our job to help people, right? If you're not hitting Success Club, like basically you're not building a business. You're just you're not. You're helping people occasionally every now and then when it's convenient for you or whatever. But that's if you want to actually build an income, you hit Success Club every single month. It absolutely has to be a non-negotiable. So it really is our job to help people, and it's our job to hit Success Club. If you were working in the corporate world or in another job, you wouldn't say, oh, well, you know, I didn't, sorry, boss, I didn't get it done today. I mean, just because you're own, you're, you are your own boss does not mean that you owe yourself any less, right? Um, you don't, don't do that. Yeah. C-O-R-R-E-A. C-O-R-I. Who? Oh, I thought somebody was talking to me. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Make sure everybody's muted. Okay, so um, anyway, back to Success Club. So you need to be hitting it every single month. It goes without saying, or it should go without saying. Um, what you need to do, other than the sneak peeks, so if you haven't already sent a bunch out this week before Thursday, um, send a ton of, invite a ton of people and tell them why you're inviting them um, after you do. So they know what it is they, they should accept or not. Um, and obviously they'll decide ultimately. But so the next thing I want you to do is look at the programs that are on sale each month. So this month we have what size and we have Insanity Max 30. So size is a fun dance workout, right? It's super fun. We got to do it at Summit last year, live with Sean T. Most fun I've ever had working out in my life. It doesn't feel like a workout. The time goes by so fast and it's just a blast. It's not that difficult. Even if you're not a dancer, you can figure it out, right? So good music at the end, like it's, it's fun. Um, so that's what you need to know about size. Anybody can do it, really. 
it's a great beginner program. Um, it, it's great for someone who doesn't like to work out, you know, who wants to lose weight, who doesn't necessarily like traditional workouts, hates aerobics, had bad experiences in gym or whatever. Um, it's just turned off to working out. That's a great selection for that person. The other one is Insanity Max 30. That is an intense workout, guys. It's super intense. You go hard, you go for 30 minutes, but there's also a modifier. And you can, you're basically supposed to max out. So you go as hard as you can until you have to max out, and you take a break, and you jump back in when you can. You modify as needed, but it's a hardcore workout with Sean T. So both of them are Sean T, right? And you guys heard he's going to be at Summit, which is awesome, because I love him. But um, anyway, that's Insanity Max 30. It's hard. No equipment whatsoever. You use your body weight. So you're jumping a lot. Um, there's a lot of hard, it's all hardcore cardio, but you do push-ups and things like that where you're using your body weight as resistance. So those are the two programs. It is your job to figure out um, a little bit about those programs. So not just what I just told you. You're not expected to do every single program from start to finish. You're not even expected to do it for a week. But you are expected to be a little bit knowledgeable about the program. And if you go into your online office, you go in your CEO, your COO, log in, sales and marketing, and the sales and marketing tab, then you look at business tools, product toolkits. It tells you everything there is to know about a program. So it tells you what level it's for, it's, you know, or who it would be best for. It tells you um, just basically what it does, how many workouts, how long each workout is, all of it is right there for you. So familiarize yourself with that. You need to know who that would be good for immediately. When you hear that's the sale, you need to go, okay, who in my list of people, and Sandy Max 30, who would benefit from a program like that? Somebody who loves to work out, probably. Somebody who wants to take it to the next level. Somebody who doesn't want to spend all day in the gym. It's 30 minutes, right? Um, people who maybe you're training for something else, but would like a dose of cardio a couple times a week. Um, I mean, so many people like that, who just who are already athletes or already have sort of a baseline of fitness. Those are the best people for Insanity Max 30. Not to say somebody who isn't as um, athletic or in shape, they could also do it. They would have to modify a lot, but it's so it's best for somebody who's in pretty decent shape so they're not discouraged. Um, but anyway, you need to know all of that. And so what I want you to do and you're going to have assignments when you leave here. So <laughs> what I want you to do is do each of the programs from your Beachbody On Demand. I want you to try um, size, and I want you to try Insanity Max 30. If you have not yet done those programs, if you have, you don't need to try them again. But if you haven't, and you have Beachbody On Demand right there available to you, so you should be at least have done a workout from every single program, That, especially if it's on sale that month, so you know um, – what it's like, and you can talk to somebody about it, and you know who it's best for. So um, what I want you to do is each of those videos, I want you to do them, each one, once um, this week, and you're going to post about your experience. And what I want you to do is, oh, shoot. Okay, what I want you to do is, sorry, I was trying to minimize it because I wrote, um, I wrote out what I, <laughs> I wrote out what I want you to say. Um, so basically, I would do, do Insanity Max 30, and then this would be my sample post, and I'll post this in a rete so you have it. Like, whoa, that was an insane 30 minutes, and I loved every minute of it. I felt like it was over before it started. Remember that crazy guy, Sean T, who created Insanity? Well, if you didn't know, he also created a shorter workout that gets you also, that also gets you amazing results. If you love Tabata-style Tabata workouts or high-intensity interval training, this is perfect for you. Program is for those who really want to push themselves to the max in minimum time. They're only 30 minutes a day. Each workout challenges you to push yourself to beat your previous max out time, so you're always challenging yourself. You are your biggest competition. The thing I like about this the most is that it requires zero equipment and can be done at home in minimal space. After this workout, I feel blank, and I was surprised that blank, and you fill that in, obviously. If you're interested in maxing out or pushing yourself, I'd love for you to check out this amazing program. It's actually the most discounted I've ever seen it this month. If you're interested in getting more info, joining my talent, my accountability group with this program, and then on, always give a deadline for the date, comment below or message me. And with that, you would post, you're basically just talking about your experience with the program. And then you would post either a video of yourself doing it, a little video clip, or a picture of yourself, like a post-workout selfie, or you with the, the program in the background, or whatever. 
be creative. Don't use a stock photo, whatever you do. Nobody wants to see a picture of Shanti with, you know, whatever, whatever comes in the challenge pack. That's selfie and it's nobody's going to stop scrolling because of that. But what I want you to do is do that workout and then you can post this or some, your own spin on this. It doesn't have to be this. I just said this because of, yeah, I'm going to post it. Let's use it. So anyway, that's what I would post for that. And then size, I would say, um, I don't know, I wrote it out. I'm looking for it. Um, sorry. Okay, with size, I would do something like this. Wow, I just got an amazing workout today, but it didn't feel like I was working out at all because it was so much fun. After this workout, I feel blank. I was really surprised because blank, and that's where you would just talk about the things that you liked about it that you were surprised about. Um, this really is a great alternative to working out and exercising. For those who tend to get bored with normal workouts and need a high energy, exhilarating way to torch calories. Um, and then say something like, I'll admit I'm not a good dancer or I have a dance background in my case or whatever it is, but I actually felt like, well, this, like you could say, if you weren't a dancer already, you would say, I'll admit I'm not a great dancer, but I actually felt like I could dance doing this workout. What's really amazing is that it's all broken down really simply by Sean T, but you're still getting sweaty and you're truly learning how to dance. Um, does this look like something you could commit to for only four weeks to see amazing results? If you're interested in joining my accountability group with this program on, that's where you give the deadline date, comment below or message me. So super simple. Um, hold on. Okay. Super, super simple. Um, that's, that's what you would post. And then a picture of you doing it or um, a video, right? So that's it. So I want you to do one a week of the programs that are on sale. And you do them early in the month. Like you might just add it to whatever. See, I think the mistake most of us make is that we only talk about the program we're doing. Unfortunately, even though we think the 21 day fix is perfect for everyone, like there's, it's not necessarily for everyone. There's, there is a program suited for everyone, but that is not necessarily it. <laughs> if you're doing a fix and you only talk about the fix, that's a problem, right? Because that doesn't, not everybody's doing the fix. So you should certainly chronicle your journey and all of that. I'm not saying don't do that, do that. But you also want to talk about what could possibly appeal to other people. So I would throw in information about, and I, you know, I wouldn't lie at all. Like if you didn't, like I probably wouldn't, I have a hard time posting about Pio because it's not my thing, right? Like I don't talk about it because it's really not my thing. I don't enjoy it. I don't, I just don't. I'm sorry, don't shoot me. But, um, I know it's a lot of people's soulmate and all that good stuff. It's just not mine. But um, I always want to be completely honest about all of that. So I might say, well, this isn't my thing. You know, you might, whatever. Like, just be honest. I'm not asking you to be, to not be authentic. So definitely still be authentic. But you, in addition to your, whatever you're posting, whatever your program we're doing right now, a lot of us are doing 22 minute hardcore. In addition to that, I want you to also, one time, the first week, this first week of May, talk about either in City to Max 30 or size and that should be based on your own experience doing it right so on demand do one of the workouts from each of those programs but just post once this week and then once next week so um, just talk about that program that you're doing and your experience with it and like I said I'll post what I just read to you um, in our team page but so basically you're just gonna talk about what you did and then you will peak interest um, as far as that goes but so I want you to do that um, and early, you know, early on in the month. So your first two weeks, you should be doing that. Um, talking about whatever program is on sale. You don't have to just talk about that. I mean, still do your normal workouts and talk about your own personal journey, but definitely include that. Um, okay, I wrote some stuff down so I wouldn't forget. And then, okay, the, another big thing you've got to do is a transformation post. I know a lot of you guys are not crazy about these. You can do Transformation Tuesday, you can do Women Crush Wednesday or Women Crush Wednesday or whatever. You can do it on a different day and be creative. Maybe without alliteration, whatever. It doesn't have to be alliterative. But um, you need to be posting a transformation post um, once a week. And preferably, it's your own. So if you have only lost four pounds, that's okay. Talk about the four pounds you've lost in the last couple weeks. If you've lost you know, 10 pounds, whatever. You have pictures even better 
if you've lost you know 40 pounds but you're not where you yet you know where you want to be yet that's okay you should have progress photos people identify with the transformation and the stages of it not just you know I was overweight and now I'm like you know I could be in a competition that's not what people are necessarily interested in they want to see the evolution right they want to see the journey along the way so you do best when you do your own. I wouldn't say necessarily your own every single week, Stacey, but at least once a month or so, you should post your own transformation photo. Um, unless you have like just a crazy amount of difference in a week, then you could do it, you know, back to back weeks or whatever. But um, you should definitely do your own. And then as I was talking to people in the Funky Feet group, um, you always want to message people who support you in your picture. So thank you so much for your support. Even if they just like it, thank you so much for your support. It means so much to me. It's always hard putting myself out there and being vulnerable. And it just means a lot that you took a minute to support me. Something simple like that, you're not asking them to join a challenge group. You're just thanking them for their support, right? And so often that leads to them, leads to a great conversation and them telling you, um, why they would like to lose weight or why you're an inspiration to them or whatever. And that often leads to challenge pack sales. So it just kind of creates a connection. Um, don't go into it wanting the challenge pack sale. Um, just try to build that relationship. But that's, you always, 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 always want to message somebody when they like one of your transformation posts, always. So um, write it out, save it in a note on your phone, whatever is easy, and then um, and just copy paste, but obviously make it a little personal. Um, and then the other times you want to, as much as possible, focus on or feature somebody from our team, somebody you know personally. Um, so, like with Insanity Max Thirty, I would I would definitely choose transformations as programs that are on sale right now, or that you um, you think people will buy right now. So, I wouldn't necessarily post one from Insanity or from PNMX. Because how many of those are you really going to sell right now? Like, or really, like, are you even going to have any challengers doing that? Not because you're looking at it from a sales standpoint, but because they've been around for a really long time and they're not programs that people are going to get super excited about. If you have one about hardcore or something that's different, or hammer and chisel, or right now it's in the Max 30 or size. And the way you find those, ask on our team page first. But then what I want you to do. If you can't find one there, is you go into our online office once again. When you log in to teambeachbody.com, you can click on the blog part before you ever go into your coach online office, and you'll see success stories is one of the headers, right? If you click on that, you can click on women or men, and then I always do women because that's my target market. I very rarely feature men. Um, and I'll click on women, and then you can actually choose your program. So like I'll choose 21 Day Fix or um, 21 Day Fix Extreme if you're about to start that, and that would be a good one to feature, right? Um, obviously the ones on sale. So feature a program there. But if you're going to not use one from our team and you're going to use one of these instead, crop the ever loving picture. Like you do not want the Beachbody logo and across the bottom, like she went $500 and all. That's just, it screams sales, and it's not going to stop anybody's scroll. So crop that out, just get the person um, with, you know, maybe the, num maybe the number of pounds off, but even then, I don't even usually get that. I crop it so it's everything else is out of the picture. Um, and then you basically want to tell the story, how she felt before she got started, how she felt after she finished the program, or how she feels now, um, and eliminate all the extraneous details. But you can either do an excerpt, which, because it has it all there, it asks her all the it asks all the transformation people the um, like all those questions. So you would just basically you know cut and paste the text, or you would just basically um, you know rephrase it in your own words. So either one of those is fine. Um, if you're gonna quote it, actually use quotes because that's not cool to copy somebody's words and not use quotes. But um, so anyway, you um, will just want to post the story part of it, not the facts, but the story. Because as I always say, and as you've heard from a bunch of us probably. Facts sell or facts tell stories sell, right? So people are gonna people want to um, grab onto something that they can relate to. So make sure that you talk about the feelings. It's it's what um, evokes emotion. So you want to find a transformation that will evoke emotion, a story that you think people will relate to in your market. Um, but do that. Focus on um, one every single week, and there are some really great ones from our team. 
I always ask the person before you use them. Um, and don't necessarily tag them. Ask them if they want to be tagged because a lot of times they have a post for the same night. They're planning to post the same night and that kind of messes up their feed. People will see the one you posted instead of the one they posted and they're not getting as many views and all of that. So always ask them if they want to be tagged before you um, tag them and always ask them before you use their post or their pictures or whatever. Um, most people are totally cool with it, but just ask first. Um, but so once a week, you will post a transformation, preferably yours at the beginning of the month. <clears throat> right? Okay. And then once a week, you will, the first week you'll post one that you'll post in Sandy Max 30, and the next week you'll post um, your experience with size. Right? Yes. Everybody get it? Gets it? Yes. Okay. So you want to hustle in the beginning, right? Do the hustling in the beginning. At the end of the month, you don't want to be hustling. You want to <laughs> relax a little bit and not be stressed on the 31st or the 30th of the month. Um, the other thing is you want to track everything. Um, if you've talked to people, like if they've liked your post before and you message them, make sure you've written their names down because you don't want to do a transformation post and then a month later, like send them the same message. <laughs> and then it's just weird, right? And they're like, oh, well, I guess that's her copy paste job. Like, this doesn't feel as personal, so make sure you write down the people that you've messaged um, so you know how that conversation goes. Always, always, always do that anyway. And track your posts, what works well, what doesn't work so well, so you know what to tweak. But transformation posts are always going to get um, a great response because people want to lose weight. People want to look like the people in the after photo. People want their own after photos. People identify with the emotions in the before. All of that. So those always get the best response. So when you want to hit success, when you're going hard, always, always go to transformation post. Um, those are the best for hitting success club. Um, and then let's see. Oh, also Shakeology. Um, with Shakeology, you should be consistently adding value like once a week with Shakeology. You're not just going to post the Shakeology selfie because that does absolutely nothing. That adds zero value to the world. Right, with every single one of your posts, you want to think about how it's adding value to the world. Is this post so what, right? This is, who cares that I posted this? Why did I post this? Like you should be thinking with every single post, the reason behind it. So with your Shakeology self AI, I'm sure you look cute and all that, but you need to talk about a benefit of it, why you love it, and educate on something about it, you know, it curbs, curbs my cravings. I'm so thankful that I have this when I'm running out the door and don't have time to sit down for a meal. Um, I'm so thankful that we have Shakeology when my kid is refusing to eat a vegetable or whatever it is. Um, just make sure that you're talking about that and you're getting creative with your Shakeology selfies. And once a week, um, add value with your, like once a week, post a picture of you drinking Shakeology or Shakeology somehow in your life, but add value with it. Always, always, always add value with that post or it's useless. Um, and then, so that's the other thing I, do. I think you should do once a week. So once a week, um, the special, you doing the special work of a on sale workout, once a week of you with Shakeology and talk, adding value with that, educate people on the importance of it or why you love it or how it's different or whatever. And then one transformation post a week. So, and the transformation post should be yours at least once a month, and it should be a teammate as much as possible or someone you know personally, and then if you can't find something there, then go to success stories in your online office and choose the program that is on sale or that you're doing or whatever and focus on that. Um, okay, and then let's see, I think that's everything. Yeah, I think that's it. But so those are my tips for hitting it early. And it's, there are things that I do every single week, not on my personal page because I all of my business comes from my like page. So um, I've grown it to, I mean, I spend a lot, a lot of time on my like page trying to grow that, and I have for years now. Um, so all of that stuff, if you're like, well, I don't see you posting that stuff, but that's because it's all on my like page um, that I do. And that's how I hit it every, literally every single month doing those, those exact things. And of course, I said invites too. None of your posts are, um, should be a substitute for the personal invites. You always need to send 
personal invites. Um, especially as a new coach, if you don't have a lot of credibility yet, there's, there's just nothing that compares with the personal relationship that you build with a personal invitation. You just cannot rely. In the first few months of becoming a coach, you will probably hit Success Club without having to do personal invites because you're warm market, they're seeing it for the first time, they'll have people who are interested or whatever. And it's very possible to hit Success Club early without doing personal invites. It is virtually impossible to continue that trend without personal invitations. Um, it's just it's just not really possible. So you've got to continue to build your market um, and you've got to continue sending personal invites. So if you're not building your market, expanding your market all the time, then you're going to run out of people quickly. So that's the other thing. Um, and I don't cold, I would, I would say a cold invite, meaning I don't invite somebody I've just added to my um, friends list unless they're, I've added them because they want to know about an accountability group or something like that. Um, then, of course, I'll invite them right away. But generally speaking, it's, I have a one-month rule. So I, as soon as I add somebody to my friends list, I will start having conversations with them. I'll send them a message or whatever. And that's when I start liking their stuff, start commenting on their stuff or whatever. But I don't send an invite or talk at all about Beachbody until a month later. I put them on my hot list in one month or my follow my. I know to follow up with that person in one month, and then it's not really a cold invite, right? Because I've been working on building that relationship. So then it becomes a warm invite, a part of my warmer market. So it's not totally weird um, to invite them at that point. So make sure that you you kind of set up. That's what I use is, is one month because it makes sense to me. And um, I basically am just really intentional with building that relationship. I comment on stuff and, and like stuff and all of that. So um, that's my role is about one month once I add people. And then also if people, if you are starting conversations with people from your past or whatever, a good way to segue into Beachbody is, you know, are you still teaching? Are you still um, work practicing law? Whatever they were currently or whatever they were previously doing when you last saw them, Ask them if that's what they're still doing. Are you still doing that? I know last time I was in DC, you were more when I left DC, you were practicing law. Are you still practicing? Are you still at Finnegan or whatever law firm? Um, ask that question because chances are they're going to ask you the same thing. So, are you still practicing law? Are you still working as a teacher? Are you still working as a CPA? You know, what are you doing now? And that's when it's very easy without being salesy just to say, I'm um, I'm a stay-at-home mom, but I'm also doing fitness coaching now, um, which I really love, right? Like, there's nothing salesy about that. It's very natural. Or I am, um, no, actually, I'm not even practicing law anymore. I'm staying at home with my kids and doing fitness coaching, which is awesome. You know, I've always loved fitness. Or, um, well, I'm still doing, I'm still working as a CPA, but I'm also doing fitness coaching because I've had such a great experience. Um, you know, and an accountability group losing weight or whatever it is. It's just a really easy segue. So that's one way to get your conversations kind of um, circled around. And you might not invite right away, but once you do have that conversation and alert them to what you're doing, they're going to start noticing on your timeline more and more what you're doing without you having to tell them. And a lot of the time when you do that, they'll come to you and say, look, <laughs> I think I want to lose weight too. I think I might like to do that too. I'd love to have a travel budget. I'd love to have, um, I'd love to be able to get whatever for my kid for Christmas or, you know, whatever it is. But um, they're just a lot more aware of what's going on with you once you tell them that so they can start watching at that point. Okay, so let me see the questions you guys had. <laughs> okay, one. Um, how far out would I set the date for what, Angela? I'm not sure what you were asking. Something about how far out should you set the date? If it's a challenge group, I usually do three weeks. Yeah, I do three weeks. Um, that way I have about um, a week and a half to really invite or two weeks 
and then I can have I have a few stragglers but with on-demand you really don't even need that long because they can access it the very next day um, but most people don't do really well when they do that so most people do better when they actually get their kit in the mail and they have it all there in front of them for whatever reason people just don't um, even though you're like you can find the whole nutrition plan the meal plan online on demand, you can find all the workouts for whatever reason. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, they still don't do it until they actually get it in the mail. So that's what I usually do. Okay, any other questions? All right, well, if you want to um, get early success complaints, those are my suggestions. You post a transformation pick, preferably your own. Tell the feelings behind it, so how you felt when you were in the before picture, even if it's not weight, even if it's just I was sad or I was depressed or I, I was filling myself with crap food and didn't have energy to keep up with my kids or my mind was always in the like, fog, whatever it is. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be I was overweight or whatever because like, like I, you guys know I've never had to really lose weight. so. Like quite the opposite, I had to gain weight. But, um, and some of you guys are in that same position. But it doesn't have to be about weight loss. It can always be about um, the other things that are going on. Transformations are so much more than just weight loss, right? Um, so definitely talk about all the feelings behind it, how you felt before. That's what people relate to, and that's where, um, that's really where sort of the magic happens. It's in the conversation about how you felt before and how they feel like that too. And you can just identify with them. And then talk about a solution because you found a solution that works. All right, so any questions? You guys look so alive tonight. Look alive, look alive. Nothing? All right. I'm not gonna keep you just to keep you. So you guys have an awesome rest of your night. I will see you guys online. Bye guys.